What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex. You're watching the Marvel edition of the Raging Nation show. This is just a web series where we're talking about all things that matter to me in the world of Marvel films. This is episode number 14, and let's talk about the Hulk. We haven't talked about the Hulk for a very long time because Marvel Studios hasn't mentioned that they have any plans to make a solo Hulk film. Well, that might be about to change. Because, according to Latino Review, that would be a website that reports on movie news, it's reported that Lou Ferrigno claims that after the Age of Ultron, after his work on Age of Ultron, that he, uh, Marvel intends to work on a solo Hulk film. Now, I don't know uh, uh, if this report is completely accurate, but Latino Review is actually a pretty reputable movie website. And they they have some pretty good um, sources. So if Lou Ferrigno mentions that Marvel has plans for a solo Hulk film, I believe him. Okay? So Hulk fans, slart, slart. <laughs> let's start getting our hopes up a tiny bit. <laughs> I mean, Marvel Studios already did mention that they got dates secured. For some future Marvel films that aren't that haven't been announced, they haven't announced which character they're going to make films out of. All right, so I mean, who knows? Maybe it's going to be a um, a solo Hulk film. Let's hope for that because I want to see a solo Hulk film done right. I mean, I like the Incredible Hulk, but I thought it could have been better. Uh, I could thought it could have been a lot better, but I I don't think it's a bad film in any way. All right, I think the CG could have improved been improved a lot though. <laughs> But anyways, a solo Hulk film could be in the works in the near future, all right? Most likely after working on the Ava the, uh, the Avenge of Ultron, the Age of Ultron, all right? Now, speaking of Hulk, uh, Mark Wal Ruffalo um, uh, did some tweeting recently, and he mentioned that uh, master of motion capture, Andy Serkis, has been giving him tips on, on, um, on his performance with being... The Hulk, all right? Uh, he, he tweeted, Well, I have been working with the great Andy Serkis on the big screen boy, and, or the big green boy, rather, and he is going to be even better, all right? So Andy Serkis, he's been doing a lot of mocap work uh, with a lot of the films that he's been in, so he is really quite a pro at it. He is, uh, you could almost call him the godfather of motion capture performances because he's been doing so many uh, uh, films in, in, using motion capture to the point where this guy's mastered the art. And you know what? There's no other, no better person to receive um, advice from than Andy Serkis. And apparently Andy Serkis is helping Mark Ruffalo with the mocap performances. So we can expect to see some better and cooler and more hard-hitting action from the Hulk in Age of Ultron. Essentially, they're going to make it a lot better, all right? Now, speaking of Age of Ultron, here is our first look at the new Iron Man armor that is going to be featured in Age of Ultron. And now, I don't know what mark it is going to be. I mean, they had Mark 7 in, in, in Avengers. Uh, they also had Mark 42 in Iron Man 3. So let's take a look at the Iron Man suit in um, in Age of Ultron, and once again, red and gold, the traditional colors, but it's it's got a little bit more red on the torso. If you remember the Mark Seven, it's got like some silver, it's got a little bit of gold. This time, more red. I mean, for the average moviegoer, you know, the movie going public, they're not going to be able to spot the difference. But if you put them all side by side. Um, you know, this one is different from the previous ones. Now, the, 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 the curious thing is, what are the special features? I mean, Mark 7 had the whole deploy thing going on. And uh, Mark 42 was able to do a lot of cool things. You know, you can, you can um, uh, you know, it was able to separate, all right? And, and you can control it from uh, Wi-Fi or <laughs> through, like, some kind of thing, you know, hit some kind of, like, thing, right? You know what I'm saying? But, um... The curious thing is, what is the feature of, of this new uh, Iron Man suit, all right? I don't know what it is, but maybe um, uh, fans of the Iron Man comics will know what that is. And so you can let me know in the comment section below. Now, I want to leave the, the ending, the closing of this uh, 
this video, this episode, to talk a little bit about The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And, um, you know, if you want to avoid spoilers about The Amazing Spider-Man 2, uh, stop watching this video right now. Okay, uh, because um, um, I'm done reporting the news about uh, uh, the Avengers and, and, and Marvel Studios. I want to talk about The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And I'll, I'll, like I said, I want to leave this part for spoilers. So I got to say this, okay? I think that Rhino didn't need to be in the movie, all right? I knew that Rhino, the way Rhino... Uh, 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 or rather, the movie was going to end as soon as Spider-Man slammed the manhole cover onto Rhino. How did I know that? It is because how the story, how the movie was played out. Electro and, 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 and Green Goblin are the main villains, okay? We were not given any time for Alexei Setsevich to develop as a character. At the end of the movie, suddenly he is Rhino, okay? And... I just felt that, man, this entire movie is so predictable. <laughs> I gave the movie a 7 out of 10. And the main reason the movie is so predictable is because of the way it is being told. The movie, Mark Webb is focused so much on, 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 on making, or in setting the movie up for the sequel and the, 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 the Sinister Six film. It got to the point where the writers, you know, uh, just kind of um, left nothing for surprises. All right. And another thing is that the so is that Sony overkilled on the marketing, completely overkilled on the marketing. The reason why is because if you watch every single trailer, every single TV spot, every single teaser, every single clip, there's nothing left for you in the Amazing Spider-Man 2. I've watched every single one of those clips and it covers all of the main highlights of the film. All of them. <laughs> And I think that that ruined the movie for me, all right? I still give the movie a 7 out of 10. I think it's a great film. I think it could have used a lot of improvements. I think the action is spectacular. The CG work is great. And I think that there was a lot of great chemistry between the characters. But I think that, uh, I feel that um, Sony did a bad job marketing this film. They spent $200 million in marketing it. And it was just too much, okay? In this case, less is more. The story has already been told by Sam Raimi, okay? So, <laughs> you don't need to put out all the marketing. Spider-Man markets itself. Just by the fact that there's a movie coming out, people will watch it, okay? That's all I gotta say in this video, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm just, I just wanted to, to just throw that out there. I didn't want to make a whole spoiler video about the spoiler review on The Amazing Spider-Man 2 because all I really want to say is that uh, the, the, the TV spots is just overkilled me too much, okay? Michael Bay markets his movies a lot better because even though he puts out a lot of TV spots and marketing and trailers, they always leave room for surprises, all right? Like in the Transformers films. There's always surprises that you don't see, but Sony killed it. No, Sony overkilled it. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I gotta say in this video. Um, if you have any comments or any knowledge about this new Iron Man suit, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you um, have any um, feelings about um, any of the same feelings I feel about, or any feelings at all about The Amazing Spider-Man 2, let me know in the comment section below. That's all I gotta say. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation, check out my photos on Instagram, at The Raging Nation, and tweet with me, on Twitter, at Raging Nation, my name is Alexi. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Only Harvey Elder in Fantastic Four. He doesn't actually become the Mole Man until later on. Perhaps for the sequel, considering that they already have a sequel planned. 